All right, folks, my name is Frain, and once more I am here with the T54E1 American 8.0 Premium and back on Advance to the Rhine as well. This is another game taken from the same session as the previous video, but, uh, well, a bit overly long to splice the two together, so I've separated them out, and here we are for round two. This time, though, it is battle mode. Both the caps down that little curved road on the eastern side there. Not really my favourite layout, particularly as those caps can practically see into the spawns as well as see each other. It, really not the uh, most ideal placement of objectives. And further than that, it also pretty much only utilises half of the map. Now, that's not to say that the players themselves will not use that other half. In fact... I fully expect them to, and that is why I've taken up position in the centre, and I'm looking out into the west. Just trying to keep an eye out for anybody who might decide to flank around this way. Typically, I do find that the only players who've come out this wide, and um, certainly further out wide than I am now, are trying to head directly to the spawn rather than flank. So I'd like to cut them off as best as I can. Now anything coming towards the centre on the initial push I would have expected to be here already so I'm moving forward just a little more into this corner. I'm going to stop, take stock of my surroundings, see if I can see anything coming and then we'll consider moving up further from here. Now as with the previous battle in this tank that I've shown the uh, the game is quite small and so there's bound to be a lot more holes in the lines, a lot more places for tanks to slip through. But it also means I'm more likely to become impatient as there's going to be far less enemies showing up. So that's one of my sort of traits that I know and I have to try and keep in check. Unfortunately, this time an enemy has shown up before I got to that impatient stage. Someone else has engaged him. Not sure if they've damaged each other, but he's not looking my way, so I'm going to dispose of him before he causes any problems. So that's a T62 down. We've already got one player on our team pushed really far forwards, almost up to their spawn. As I said, this side of the map does tend to get used for those spawn pushes. Meanwhile, pretty much everyone we had over on that far eastern road is already dead. So they're pushing up to our camp quite handily. And we're sort of trying to flank around into theirs through the more open terrain. Not totally keen on pushing up just yet. I'm still not certain that there isn't anything trying to flank or that there won't be any of their respawners coming this way. Certainly I've already killed one guy and I'm figuring he's quite likely to come back and try and go for me. I'm just trying to sit tight, keep my patience as long as I can, look for an opening, see some movement down on the A-cap, so peek out. It's already dead. And it's seeming like it's a good time to start moving. Both teams are down a couple of players. Certainly in our case the uh, helicopter first spawns has not helped that situation, but both teams are down a few. Things are looking quiet over here. There is always a chance someone will drive out now and shoot me in the back, but that's always going to be a chance, and there's only song I can let that restrict me from moving up. If it happens, it happens. I can't always account for it. Uh, we'll come across a mouse now, and this is a really odd engagement. First shot, I'm going for the turret ammo. Turns out it's not there. Second shot, go for the ammo in the hole. Third shot, well, it took out his turret crew. Fourth shot into the tree. And now, well, it's a little bit embarrassing, really. Obviously, the tree is partially obscuring him. And he is camouflaged reasonably well, but because I already know he's there, when I look for him in certainly watching this video back, I can quite clearly see where he is. Whereas at the time, I felt like he'd driven off and I'd lost sight of him. I don't know how I managed to completely misplace him like that. But I managed to bounce the hit from him, so one into his left cheek damaging the breach and then wanted to the right finishing him off with the gunner shot. I wasn't entirely sure I could get the gunner with the first round, well fifth shot really, 
as there was a fence post in the way, but as it turned out, I could. As I said, a little embarrassing that I lost track of him so easily. But overall, that was a very weird engagement. I didn't really expect there to be any ammo in his turret, but half his turret was obscured around the corner, and I wasn't sure quite how much I could hit his crew. The second round seemed to black just a few shells out of that ammo rack. And then for the third round, there didn't seem to be any ammo there at all. Whereas there was quite clearly still something left of that rack that I hit, so... I don't know. don't know where that ammo went, or why it didn't explode. Very quick uh, snapshot on that T-54 there. I'd seen him driving up the road, but he'd taken so long to arrive, I had assumed he'd gone round the back of that sort of central row of ruined buildings. Turned out he hadn't, and was instead of coming for me in the park, so I was quite lucky to get that shot off. But our team is trying to recap B. I'm a bit concerned that they've pushed up in the meantime while that engagement around the mouse was going on. We certainly lost a few players up here. So I'm coming back to check. Just having a look up and down the road. Trying to cover... Obviously, if we're capping the B point, the enemy will know exactly where at least one of our team is, and it's an opportunity for them to come and try and kill him. So if I can cover him, there may be some chances where there's going to be a bit of a bit of an unfocused enemy who's got their eyes on the prize and isn't going to notice me lurking nearby. And of course, what's the easiest way for them to get to him in this situation? It's going to be to push up through the west. So I'm back over here and just really want to make sure nothing slips past. We've only got four of us left on the team. The enemy's got quite a few more players than us now and there is a lot of ground to keep track of on this map. A lot of open space and little pathways that the enemy could slip through. Now, of course, this isn't the most exciting thing to be doing, just sitting and waiting like this. But it needs to be done if we're to have a hope of pulling this back. A little bit of movement. Quick peek and shot into the side of his turret. Was intending to try and get more of the crew and the breach, but he's got ammo in his turret ring as well, which provides another potential killing method. And given the size of the teams, I'm hoping that was probably going to be the only flanker. There's not too many people driving around, so what's the likelihood that uh, there's going to be half their team remaining coming this way? There was quite a bit of firing going on near the B-point as well, so I wanted to come over and lend a hand. The BMP2 is already down. It's got a very distinctive gun sound, especially when you hear the missile accompanying it. But we seem to be all clear up here, we've capped it, and so there's less defence needed now, I can start moving up. The team's going to be a bit less vulnerable, they're not all sat on a you know, static point where the enemy knows that there's someone there. I can start heading down with the intent of picking off whatever that anti-aircraft gun is and finishing them for good. Although they have obviously just picked up a kill, so... They may not be out for the count just yet. Just again, really got to be cautious. There could be an enemy around any corner. It's quite easy to have a lapse of concentration. And ultimately, I'm expecting that he's going to be sat in his spawn. And there's only so close I can get before I'm marked on the map. I don't know how many other people are around there, so... Instead of pushing right in and going to kill him, my hope, my intent, is that I can sit here and wait for him to leave his spawn and try and push out. There's not much as ZSU can do on the battlefield, certainly not against some of these vehicles, but it's also quite unlikely that he's going to sit in his spawn the whole game, so I'm just going to sit and wait keep my eye out for any enemies turning up. 
It's a long waiting game, so we'll skip ahead just a couple of minutes. Now, ZSU has pushed out of their spawn and is engaging our M103. So I'm just getting an angle on him. Quick hole break shot. And although that isn't the ZSU that was, or that I initially came over here to find in their spawn, it is one of them down and hopefully out permanently. But I don't want to stay in the same place for too long, so lucky timing to turn around. There's a, a leopard going around the flank there. As I said before, I kept returning to that sort of flank guardian spot just in case somebody chose to do that. And he is pushing out this way now. And that wasn't my best initial shot. I didn't have too much time to take over it given I was trying to shoot past those breakable walls. But ideally, I probably would have either hit him a bit further forwards for one of the ammo racks or into the engine. This has got a five second into clip reload, so would have quite comfortably taken his engine and then been reloaded before he could rotate his turret around. You know, he doesn't have a loader, so he's going to be on a, a much longer reload than mine. I can probably get off three shots before he's ready. But he saw me and backed up. Oh, sorry, retreated further into the, the park, I should say. And seems to be going after this M103. I do have a possibility for a shot here once I finally elevate my gun. Tried to shoot for the crew compartment of the Leopard, I could just see his engine out behind that bush. Turns out there is actually a static wreck there just underneath the M103's barrel, and I couldn't see it through the bush, so... Ended up completely failing to do anything there. Wouldn't have ultimately helped the M103, he did get killed by a BMP2, the Leopard died anyway. And I managed to get rid of the ZSU uh, in the, the confusion. I had six scuffed his shot on me, took out my engine. Um, I'm a bit surprised that, given the amount of filler and the 122 mil shells, he didn't kill me anyway. But that's his barrel down, just stuck it a little too far around the corner. And I'm almost repaired and ready to escape. No intention of pushing him while he's on repair, as in my experience, that thing does repair uh, a little fast. Might have been the better solution in the end though, as... Look at that bounce, right off the top of the BMP2. I hate encountering those things at close range, because to try and hit that lower plate, you really have to pull your gun down, sort of pointed at the floor. And it's pretty hard to pinpoint the turret in a quick third-person snapshot like that, especially when there's a huge funnel of smoke coming out the front of his turret. So that's my little run of terror ended in the T-54 and I'm back in the M48. Just going to go and see if I can uh, exact some vengeance. The M48 isn't really one of my preferred tanks at this battle rating, but it's uh, not spaded and I wanted to try and earn some RP on it so that's Pretty much in the entire reason behind it, deciding to bring this as my backup. Got heat FS loaded as the primary rather than the APHE. Well, the APHE will be great for side shots, it's not going to do too much against tanks like the IS 6 or T 10s or, heaven forbid, an another mouse if I should run into one. And now I'm the only one on the ground. Rather regretting that decision to respawn, everything got cleaned up quite quickly. It's a very rapid sort of team departure there. And I'm really concerned about what's still around. I know there's the BMP2. And that's a uh, pretty much as far as my map intelligence goes right now. So, Object 120. That's the player who was previously in the ZSU I was hunting. Another frustrating bounce off the front of the BMP2. Just hit a little ditch or bump as I fired at him and 
instead of hitting his lower plate, he pressed down and it sort of caught the beak. And then there's another player on the beak app. There we go. The I-6 taken out through the front. I had no idea what he was, just I have to shoot and I have to shoot now or I'm going to die. And I'm really glad I brought those heat of her shells. So here comes the BMP2. And we've both seen each other, so we're in a bit of a stalemate. Slight awkward clipping of the hitbox. And he underestimated my reload. So that's the whole break shot into his side. Bit of vengeance for my previous death. And, well, three of their players down in quick succession. Hopefully that's evened things out a little bit. Got a T95 for an ally coming back. I'm no longer alone on the ground, although, obviously, he is a bit limited in how much he can assist me. And, well, I may as well try and see if I can go and cut off their, their respawners. Try not to let them get back in control of this map. Now, yep. I know what you're thinking, and I was thinking it too at this point. How on earth did I survive that? How much luck did I have this game? And to work that one out, I had to watch the server replay back. It's actually few things I checked the server replay for in this battle. And the other one was where is that guy? Still got zero points all this way through. And I'll uh, come to both of those in a moment, but for now that scoreboard has shown me that there is only two players left on their team. One has zero points and is therefore unlikely to have ever even left their spawn. And the other has just flown over me in an aircraft. So, this has somehow turned into a potential victory. Now, our T-95 is capping B. We don't actually need it. It doesn't give us any sort of points boost to retake it. We can comfortably ignore it. He can't come down and cap it. Unless he uh, wants to kill himself or go back and land, which is going to give us time. So I may as well just go straight for A. Now first off, let's uh, talk about that T-62. Now in the server replay, it turns out he fired in third person. He didn't aim it, he just fired as he saw me. And his shell actually went under my tank. So it looked like he should have just completely missed. But somehow it went under my vehicle and then struck the sort of lower side plate on the opposite side with the spore then traveling back into the tank and yellowing my engine and my breech completely missing all of my crew it was one of the weirdest sort of post penetrations of penetrations itself that I've ever seen I don't quite understand how it happened if he fired under my tank, there should be no way he could hit the armor on the other side. But then how does the spoil damage those two specific components? Right now, at this point, I'm uh, just trying to uh, evade this aircraft. I have no idea how much pen he's got. I'm not familiar with the aircraft. I'm just familiar with how often I get set on fire through the engine deck, so... Just trying to keep myself moving a little bit while his point decaps. Hopefully avoid getting hit long enough that I can start getting a comfortable shot with my uh, Capola gun. And that's him burning and going down, so... Nice final kill for me. And on to the second uh, thing I had to check in the server replay, which is where was that final enemy. Turns out he's in an IT-1 and 
at the start of the game he drove himself outside of the map sort of down in about J6 he went through the rubble outside and has been sat behind a wall in J7 for the entire battle he's never moved from there he's just sat with his sort of camera pointed into a wall no intention of joining in so their team has been one player down right from the start of course we also had a helicopter who was pretty much dead the second the game began as well so we could sort of really class that as both teams being down by one player but that final player in the aircraft never did respawn and after a bit of caution looking around to see if maybe this final player would appear we've gone for the cap we're sitting taking it and that's game over somehow it turned it back into a victory after uh, slowly just losing more and more ground it was a very tough game and i'm glad we managed to pull it back just never showed up that guy yeah that's a good result very pleased so 18,000 RP in the end you can really see the effect of those RP changes recently of course I did have a premium tank in there as well but half that match was played in the M48 nice game all round I'm very happy with it really not one I expected to pull back after I respawned and saw my entire team vanish in the blink of an eye that's all for today i sorry for it being a bit of a long one but as always thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed and i will see you next time <laughs> <laughs>